According to the Chief Inspector of Schools, many children entering primary schools today appear less equipped to learn than they've ever been. Teachers claim there's no time to sort out poor language and social skills at Key Stage 1, when SATs lie just around the corner for these children. I would say that without a doubt, in Britain today, we're starting formal education too soon. In terms of them coming into school, teachers find it very difficult because they feel they haven't time to concentrate on developing language, listening, attention skills. The tests and targets agenda has meant that they are feeling they've got to get on with getting children reading, writing, learning to wield a pencil and getting onto the literacy as quickly as possible. In fact, it's probably counterproductive. The, it's more important that we develop the underpinning foundations of language, listening and attention. So how could we better prepare our children for the challenges of Key Stage 1 literacy? During her 25 years in the Russian school system, teacher and researcher Galina Dolya was awarded the country's highest education honour. Her expertise lies in education for early years. I can definitely tell what is happening in Russia and I know that to the age of five the teachers are not allowed to teach children to write letters and they work more on the underlying cognitive uh, abilities and skills and uh, the reading and writing r really comes naturally. Ten years ago Galina arrived in the UK to introduce techniques for developmental education based on the work of Russian psychologist Lev Vygotsky. Here at Galina's preschool nursery, play, especially children's self-initiated role play, is considered one of the most fruitful ways of developing the basic language and social skills underlying literacy and learning. What you need is a balance of teacher-directed and child-initiated activities. Little children need to do things that interest them and they will be very, very um, preoccupied and interested and will maintain concentration if it's their own interests they're following. They also need opportunities to do what the teacher says under more formal conditions and a balance of the two is what's required. If you get good teacher-directed activities the language that they pick up through their work with the teacher will be picked up and used in their own play and that is really productive but it's when they're playing that their language is at its highest when children are engaged in activities that interest them particularly role play then they will use more complex vocabulary and more complex constructions if you eat one of these I'll give you a um, more my time. Can you help her eat it then? Because she's finding it hard to hold it. Rich opportunities for child initiated learning are balanced with 20 minute teacher led group activities. Deputy Manager Amanda is introducing this group of three year olds to symbolic literacy, which lies at the heart of Galena's programme of learning. Today I thought we'd do some reading, but reading to play music too. Look, I've got some magic cards here and they've got long strips and little short, that's right. So when we see this I'd like a big loud noise. So what kind of noise will you play for this one? A little, a little noise or a quiet noise, that's right. The ability of the child develops to read the different schemes and to understand signs. So he knows uh, if there is a long strip, then it represents a loud sound. And there is a short strip, a uh, soft sound. And the children need uh, to look at the diagram and to play. Like musician looks at the notes and understands what to play, or the letters what to read. It is again the same um, idea of the development uh, of uh, pre-reading skills. Here you go. Excellent. Give yourself a clap. Well done. Two Waters Primary School in Hertfordshire 
is the first state school in England to take on Galena's Vygotskyan Key to Learning program to offer early years pupils a sound foundation for language and learning. The Vygotsky comprises a number of different modules. One of them is on literacy. And um, it, they have some absolutely super ideas in there. When they do storytelling, um, you use symbols to represent the characters and the things that are involved in the story. And the children end up being able to tell the story um, without a single word on the page, but through the use of symbols. So when you move them on to introducing letters, etc., and words, it seems to flow really very naturally. And I like the way that they are um, not threatened in any way by language initially, so that they have this lovely confidence in telling stories. So by the time they get to year one, they are really ready to take off and start writing and reading. What story might I be thinking of if you the see three these little characters? Bears. The three bears and who? The Goldilocks. Oh, well done, Goldilocks. Engendering a love of stories at this age is essential. Foundation stage coordinator Susanna Lines is returning to a familiar story with a group from her reception class. While they're walking in the woods, what happened? She eats the porridge and sits so on the chest and breaks the baby bed. Oh, she's naughty. And, and, and she sleeps on all the beds that the daddy one is too hard and the mummy one is too soft and the baby ones is, is just, just right. That's right, that's right, I just said. Susanna's going to apply a symbolic technique called story grammar. During these sessions, the children learn uh, how to substitute the real objects by different uh, shapes. If it is three bears, so there will be a big circle daddy bear and middle sized circle mommy bear and the baby bear. And then it is like a symbol theater. Instead of first, the teacher uses as a lot uh, different uh, friendly props and puppets as possible, but then one day they disappear. And for the child, this symbol or shape becomes that character. These are funny signs. <laughs> what could these be for? What's there three of in the three bears? The bears. Yeah. There's the bears, so what could these be? Bears. Bears, because look, are they all the same size? No. no. Oh, they're not. So this one, which are who could this be? Baby bear. The baby bear. Now, because we're making a map of it, if this is a sign for baby bear, what we need to do, we need to put it on the blue piece of paper, but in the same place as Baby Bear is on the orange. For example, in the story of the Little Red Riding Hood, you have a Little Red Riding Hood and her mother, and then Little Red Riding Hood meets the wolf, wolf goes to the grandmother, so the, what are the key points, main points uh, of the story? And then the children um, analyze the story and they create these models, or it can be the three Billy Goats graph, or oh, the three little pigs, and you can start it uh, not with the diagrams first, but you can ask the child maybe to draw what are the main uh, events in the story, and then you start substituting. So we've made this picture of the three bears, and here we've made a map. map. What have we used here instead of pictures? We've used... Do you remember that word? Symbols. <gasps> symbols. Wow, we've used symbols instead of pictures. That was very, very clever of you. Nursery children at Two Waters are learning left to right directional reading through fun activities like symbol dance. Right, so here we need to, what do we need to do? Jump. Jump. This is now what we call symbol dance, and it is really the action of coding and decoding. For me, it is straight pre-reading. Hop again, and last of all, hop again. Well done, you're very good at remembering those signs. For some children, secure motor control and hand-eye coordination seem to come naturally. Others, especially boys, need help developing these skills for handwriting. Ready to wake your tired hands up and your fingers? Fingers like to wiggle, waggle. Wiggle. This artographic session, led by Galena's nursery manager Carrie, is designed to develop fine motor coordination. Open. 
Shut them. Open. Shut them. Give a little clap. Would you like to take one, Teddy, and pass it on? Vygotsky talked a lot about the external mediators and we use uh, a, a lot of them. We introduce uh, the children the writing ring and the writing ring is the external mediator which helps the child to remember that the only finger which goes on the top of the pencil or a pen is the one which has the writing ring. And you can draw a little uh, flower here and the pencil will be a butterfly. You can tell a lot of wonderful stories and I know that each teacher has his own story how to introduce it. I like my ring. Right, now do you remember something that you were very, very good at last time and that was making ladders and we're going to do it quite quickly on our boards and then we're going to paint them because you are so good. Ready to watch? Got one long line and another very long line and then you've got lots of lines in between. What could it be? A train track. It could be. Can you think of anything else it might be? Turn it around and make a ladder, couldn't we? Anything else it could be? Stairs. Maybe it could be stairs, Tommy, yeah? What about a fence around your house? A fence. Yeah. Yeah, do you think you could do that for me? They know a lot of parents who come to the kids learning program and we explain to them what we are doing, but still they worry so much about reading and writing because some parents only know something happens in child's learning if you have letters written uh, on the piece of paper which you take home. But there are so many other programs and activities what you can do with the child when then they will be doing it naturally and will be able to learn anything. The innovative practices adopted in early years by Two Waters School have helped lay some of the foundations for reading and writing. Okay, children, this morning we're going to be reading a story of Mickey the, the, the Pig. Okay, if you can join in with the rhyming words, see if you can, okay? So we've got Mig the Pig. I love my way. Okay. Listen carefully then, Bryn. Okay. Do you know Mig the Pig? By year one, the pupils seem ready to enjoy the challenges of a more structured literacy hour. Who is the fairest in the land? They're now building on the foundations using their phonics. G, g, g. Can you find a G to put with an Ig? And they're all well on their way to becoming readers and writers. One's looking at nursery school, starting with the singing and the music and the rhyming, and then getting on to little phonic activities as quickly as we can. I think the good news is that it is perfectly possible to develop their language. There seems to be a window which is very wide open to the age of about six. My hope is, with all of the strategies that we now use, that no child will ever leave this school without reading and writing. No child has yet, I have to say, and no child, I hope, ever will do. And that's really important to us.